Guru, I've always wanted to ask this question, uh, and then today I've got this opportunity. It's a very basic question, but uh, uh, yeah, we've always been uh, told that, you know, everything is pre-decided in our fate, and then it's all about luck. So I always keep arguing with my mom that, uh, you know, uh, I have to take risks, I have to become a big entrepreneur. She says, no, everything is pre-written. So uh, what is in our control and what is not in our control? It, it is always confusing. So do we just let things go to happen or keep struggling and then make things happen? It's, it's very confusing, Sadhguru. Please guide us. <laughs> <laughs> if you're making something happen, why should you struggle? Uh, but some things that really do not work in our favor, we keep really… Uh, if I have to give… By taking a risk, I would like to t <laughs> give an example. Uh, like for example, if we see Mark Zuckerberg's life story or Bill Gates' life story, it all began with uh, so much of uh, you know, controversies you know, and all that. But uh, at the end, they have really landed successful and now they're doing well. So uh, when we really see stories like this, it confuses us what part do we follow and then mm -hmm. do we be honest or just keep doing or following things the way things come? <laughs> There are many complexities in the question, please sit down. <laughs> I don't know where the honesty came into this and why it came to question me. <laughs> anyway, see if you take charge of your physical body, if you have some mastery over your physical body, about fifteen to twenty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you take, ta take charge of your intel intelligence, fifty to sixty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. If you take charge of your very life energy within you, one hundred percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands. The question is only, have you taken charge of this? The problem is you are trying to take charge of the world. No, you have to enhance this. If this is enhanced, the activity you perform is naturally enhanced. This is like, you know there is a Buddha circuit here, the F1 circuit is here in Delhi. You are on the Formula One track with your old Maruti 800. If you hit 300 kilometers per hour, all four wheels will fly in four different directions. If you want to be on an F1 track, you must have a reasonably good machine which can take it. So the important thing is you must enhance this one, but you are trying to enhance activity. If you enhance activity without enhancing this one, this will break up. This is what a lot of people are doing to themselves. But if you focus on enhancing this, you will take activity in your stride effortlessly. Then you will see creating something is not a struggle. I interviewed Satya Nadella, the Microsoft CEO who was born in India last week. And I said to him, the top nine CEOs in the world are all Indian. <laughs> Why are they all leaving the country? Why aren't we seeing a Microsoft or a Google being created here in this environment? Because in this country, we still have a, a socialist back backlog. There are some people like this who raised their hands in the beginning, who doesn't like anything to succeed. Mm -hmm. If anything succeeds, they will go against it. Anything doing well, they don't like it. People are happy, they don't like it. So people go out and thrive. So should there be a Google or a Microsoft here in India? I'm sure it's bound to happen because the time for Google and Microsoft is past. Something new has to come up, I'm sure it will come up. I'll take some more questions if there are. Yep, just the lady in the back. Namaste Sadhguru, my name is Nina Clay and I'm in Business World. And I was just wondering that this inner engineering program that you're talking about, can it help people with psychological problems as well? <coughs> Already manifested problems? See, it depends. Uh, psychological problems are not as simple as, uh, you know, it's not black and white. There are too many shades in between. So all psychological problems cannot go under one banner. It is… every individual psychological problem is very unique. If there is no one solution for all of them, some of them are pathologically embedded in their system which is not easy to handle. Many are induced because of the situations and the challenges that they face in their life, 
those can be easily turned around. People who have become psychologically imbalanced because of situational pressures upon them, we can definitely turn them around. But those who are pathologically so, it's not easy. We can give them some relief, but will it be all fixed? Uh, that would be an empty promise. Thank you. We spoke about ambition earlier and uh, you're talking now about anxieties and disorders and psychological issues. Do you think with the drive of ambition, more people are developing depression, anxiety, mental health issues? <laughs> See, I personally don't like the word ambition because in a certain way, you're trying to impose your will upon the world. Mm. You want to be something and you want the world to cooperate to make you that something. If we transform ourselves from ambition to a larger vision, we can do the same thing very joyfully. Still, we will become who we become depending upon our capabilities, but we can do it joyfully with a great sense of fulfillment rather than being crushing ourselves to become something. Mm. I keep telling people, most people are trying, you know, they're killing themselves to live. To live, you don't have to kill yourself <laughs> If you have to do this life joyfully, it's very important that you have invested yourself in a vision to create something rather than ambition to become something. Mm -hmm. There's just a question right there. Oh, hi Sudhguru, namaste. I'm Simarpreet Singh, a global shaper from Chandigarh. I was reading Isha Foundation's blog and there's this one article uh, the heading is Sadhguru's enlightenment in his own words. So I want to know, according to you, what is enlightenment you and how can it. other people <laughs> be, be enlightened beings as uh, you have mentioned your experience of getting enlightened. Can you tell us about that? Thank you. <laughs> the blog didn't tell you. <laughs> he couldn't figure it out on the blog. <laughs> Let me put it technically because there are so many glorious explanations about what it is. As I was speaking earlier, see when you sit here, your experience of yourself is largely physical, isn't it? Hmm? If I… if somebody next to you pokes you, will you say, don't poke my body or will you say, don't poke me? Don't poke me, isn't it? Because your experience of the body is myself. But is it true, this body is something that you accumulated over a period of time? Yes? What you accumulate can be yours, can never ever be you, isn't it? Hmm? Whatever you accumulate, it can be yours, it can never ever be you. Right now, as I'm speaking, I say, this is my cup. You will think, oh, Sadhguru has some problems. <laughs> But let's listen some more because everybody says he's wise <laughs> After some time I said, this is me, then you'll say, let's go. Because this is sheer madness, isn't it? Something that you acquired, you think is you, isn't that madness? So right now, that is the madness. What you accumulated, you think it's me. The day you're free of this madness, we will say you're enlightened experientially, not intellectually. It's quite difficult to get to that stage, you would know. <laughs> it is not difficult, it is just that it's in a different direction than the way you're looking right now. Mm -hmm. When I say the way you're looking right now, can you see me? Yes. Use one hand and point out where I am. Ah, you got it wrong, Yelda. <laughs> Are you yeah. everywhere? Is that what no, you're no, trying no. to say? <laughs> <laughs> this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the whole story. Mm. So where do you see me now? Within, Within yourself. Yeah. Where do you hear me right now? Within myself. Within yourself. Mm. Where did you see the whole world? Within yourself. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Mm. Your pains and pleasures happen within you. Your joy and misery happen within you. Your agony and ecstasy happen within you. Even light and darkness is only happening within you, isn't it? 
But what about the pain that others inflict on one another and the suffering? When was the last time somebody poked you with a dagger? <laughs> I, I was actually in Mosul um, three <laughs> weeks ago <laughs> and I saw a lot of people poking each other with all sorts of things. See, when you say the pain that other people inflict, if it's physical, mm. this is what he, the issue that he's raised now. If your experience is such, if you sit here, that you clearly, experientially know, you clearly know this cup is not me. Similarly, if you know, not because you're thinking about it, simply you know this body is just one more acquisition of mine. You will keep it well, you will use it well, but just because this is not me, I'm not going to break this. I'm going to keep this well because it's useful to me. If this is so, you will see you will be completely free from various things that normally people suffer. Mm -hmm. Just now, I've been on a thirty-day ride across the country. All the other drivers who were driving with me, they have spare drivers. I have no spare driver because I am supposed to drive every kilometer. Daily I'm driving twelve to sixteen hours a day. And in these thirty days, I did one hundred and forty-two events, mm -hmm. events like this. Mm -hmm. And some of them are very large events with twenty, twenty-five thousand people and one-hundred-and-eighty-six one-on-one interviews. That means when I'm driving, most of the time arrangements were made in the car for microphone, camera, everything. Continuously I was talking through the day and night and driving. Driving on Indian roads like that <laughs> is not easy to do, okay? Mm -hmm. What is it that keeps you going? It's just that, if you have a little space between yourself and your body, suddenly you will see the limitations of the physical does not rule you anymore. So is it easy or difficult to get there? It is not difficult, it's in a different direction. See, right now when you say, where am I, you say, you point the finger here, but actually in your experience it's happening within you. If you were conscious of that, you would clearly understand all experiences within you are created by you, maybe unconsciously, but it is created by you. Everything that happens within you happens because that's the way you're doing it. So this is why in this culture we said, the way you're experiencing your life is your karma. Mm. The word karma means it's your doing. Today it's been misinterpreted, they think it's a fate. Mm. It is not a fate, it's the most dynamic way to live. When we say your life is your karma, it means your life is your making, hundred percent. Why is it then that the majority of the eight billion people on our planet follow the other path and not <laughs> this path, if it's not difficult? You're counting me out, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> as if I don't exist. <laughs> See, because people have begun to live in such a way, that their involvement with life is very superficial. They're busy making arrangements on the outside. They have not paid enough attention to the life that they are. Mm. But if you want to really live well, you must understand the mechanism of what this is, isn't it? Mm. Suppose you buy a phone. If you don't read the user's manual, will you be able to use it well? I'm asking, this is the most sophisticated gadget on the planet, isn't mm. it so? Mm. Hmm? Yes. Human mechanism. Is there a better technology? This mm. is the technology. Mm. Have you read the user's manual? So if you understood the user's manual fully and learned to use it that way, then that's enlightenment in a certain <laughs> way. We've got time uh, for, for one more question, if anyone has something brief that they'd like uh, the opportunity to ask. Sadhguru, anything yes? <laughs> I think she's referring to the 188 interviews you did and the 144 events, you don't See, look in tired. This, in this thirty-five years, my average sleep has been anywhere between two and a half to three hours per day. Because uh, right now you check my pulse and see, because I have a cold and things, it's a little up, it's around fifty-two, fifty-four mm -hmm. in that region. But if I'm well and if I sit in one place, it'll settle down to thirty-six, thirty-four in this mm -hmm. range. It's going at ease. 
If everything is going at ease, then there is no stress of doing something. It's very important that human beings first learn to work upon themselves before they meddle with the world. If this one thing is done, then you will do the right things with the world around you. Because if you do not even know how to treat yourself well, how will you treat other people well? If you don't know how to bring well-being to yourself, how will you bring well-being to other people? It's not going to happen, it's just talk, empty talk. I was in a peace conference, international peace conference. Forty-two Nobel laureates were there. One after another, one after another belting out long speeches, mostly read from paper, they don't even look up, they're just reading, reading pages and pages. Then when my turn came, I asked, it's so much talk about world peace. Mm. How many of you can genuinely put your hand on your heart and say that you have a peaceful mind? Your mind is peaceful. They were very honest, they said, no, we are not peaceful, mm -hmm. but we want the world to be peaceful. See, the world is very peaceful minus the human beings <laughs> World is fantastic mm -hmm. minus the human beings. It's only what is happening in the human mind, a larger manifestation is happening on the street which is looking ugly. Otherwise, tell me what's wrong with the world. If you and me are not here, the world is just fine, isn't it? So, we do not know how to bring balance to our own self, but we want to do that in the larger world, it'll never happen. We have to understand this. What you see as a world is just a larger version of who we are. If you don't fix this, we can't fix that. Do you predict that will ever happen? Because we're seeing a more divided… as we realize how small the world is, we're also creating more <laughs> barriers and divisions. Uh, I'm not somebody who thrives on predictions of any kind. <laughs> I don't like predictions because predictions go… are made from the cold facts of today. Predictions don't take into consideration what's beating in the human heart. Mm. Human beings are aspiring to do something about themselves like never before. And today, <laughs> I, you know, I keep joking with people, I say, see, I'm the greatest <laughs> guru ever in the history of humanity. They, they look at what happened to Sadhguru, he's becoming Mike Tyson or something. <laughs> this is because when a Krishna came, when a Buddha came, when so many other great beings came, mm. if they spoke, hardly fifty people could hear them. Today I can sit here and speak to the entire world. This was never before possible thanks to the technologies. Mm. So today this is possible. This is also possible that we could make the world meditative, very much possible. And for the first time we are touching that many number of people as we would have never done before. Mm. So is it a possibility? Definitely. Will it happen right now? Not necessarily. But in our lives, if we do not do what we cannot do, it's not a problem. In our lives, if we do not do what we can do, we're a disaster. So, I, it's my wish and my blessing that none of us should become a disaster like that. What we can do must happen, what we cannot do. On that note, I'd really <laughs> like to thank you, Sadhguru, for taking the time to, to um, speak to us, and despite your cold as well. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm better now. You're better now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming.